was in the gardens and was looking up into a flowering tree and I saw this big black bee. Uh, I knew it was a carpenter bee, but I didn't know much about them. And when I looked on the internet for information, I found to my surprise it had been declared extinct in inland New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia. Never been recorded for more than 50 years. So here we have the bee in the gardens. And um, we've been following the bee with members of the Canberra Nature Map in the gardens for two years now. It's definitely breeding there, but we don't know where it's breeding. And uh, it overwinters quite successfully in the gardens, but it's never been found outside them. And uh, last year we were uh, very, it was very nice to see courtship by the male, and there's the female up higher. The male's quite distinct, it's a teddy bear, and uh, he has a short but merry life chasing females. <laughs> and he only lives for about two or three weeks, but the female does live for a long time, laying eggs in nests, in hollows in the trees, which we've never been able to find. Um, as I said, um, uh, Canberra Nation Map people have filled in the records because I can't get to go on every week. It's very opportunistic and we've had many pictures of the bee now. And more recently, someone's found the bee out at Gundaroo uh, just a couple of weeks ago. There's a single bee on a chromia plant in the garden. And it seems to me that this is the key to where they've come from. They've just dispersed across inland New South Wales and turned up in the garden where there's an abundant food source and set up a new breeding colony there. And the reason that they're absent from most of New South Wales is probably land clearing and general degradation of the environment, which has uh, destroyed a lot of the flowering shrubs they, they need. Another project is uh, uh, of great interest is the um, Marimbula star here, which is an endangered plant near Marimbula on the south coast. And we had a, a big blitz there looking for pollinators because we wanted to make sure that there was seed set and there was pollinators visiting the plants. So we spent uh, a weekend looking for that and um, you can see some very young volunteers here uh, checking the plant out. You can see just behind there a house and this is how endangered they are here by development at Tura Beach. And lots of insects turned up, bees collecting pollen and this ladybird. Uh, ladybirds uh, are normally thought to be predators, but um, this ladybird is actually collecting nectar, but being shiny it doesn't do much in the way of pollination. I've also now started work on uh, a project on the uh, orchids of uh, the southern tanglelands, and we've asked volunteers to help with us looking at pollinators, and we've ended up with pictures like this. That comes from one of the volunteers on the south coast, and you can see here a bee, and it's got the pollinia of the orchid stuck to its head, which it's actually trying to remove. <laughs> um, but if you look carefully at the higher legs, you'll find more pollen there. And it's collected that pollen from another plant because the orchids don't have loose pollen. And uh, it's just attracted there to find the nectar. And it's got, got the um, pollinia there, which will be hopefully transferred to another plant if it can't remove them. Pollinators and orchids are, are quite a, a difficult thing to uh, find because it's very opportunistic. And uh, can you see the pollinator up there? Mm -hmm. The yellow dot? That's a fly pollinator with the pollinia stuck on its head. Um, and it's very opportunistic, and uh, uh, we're almost reliant on people seeing orchids for the, the right time of day. They might pick up an image like this. Um, I've looked at hundreds of orchids and I've got about two pictures in 20 years of a pollinator. Another issue, a long-term project, is um, dieback of um, snow gums. And uh, uh, it's a real worry up in the uh, alpine areas that uh, these gums here are not uh, burnt by the fires of 2006. They're actually dying from a wood boring insect, which you see here, the damage under the bark. And it's progressively attacking all the trees up there. 
and it, it would be very useful to know how extensive this is because at the moment it seems to be confined to the actual room skiing areas which is a bit of a worry and um, you can see on the left there the uh, long-term effects of the borer very characteristic of the uh, boring beetle but one of the issues is of course that the trees are being trimmed to enable the skiers to knock them into a branch and knock themselves out and uh, a lot of the damage seems to start from these cut branches as you heard in the introduction i've um, been a member of the native plant society for a long time uh, more than 20 years we didn't know we were citizen sciences we've been beavering away at collecting data on plants uh, from field trips and Wednesday walks for nearly 30 years and there's a, a large team of volunteers that work uh, digitally identifying the plants and put them on a database so we're a big group of citizen scientists and uh, projects uh, that we've been involved with include uh, this um, Pomoneris uh, it's a much underrated uh, species that's uh, very uh, <coughs> it's um, local populations are, are very important and its uh, centre of diversity is in the southern tablelands we've got 20 or 30 species here so we've done a uh, website with a profile on this plant and this is just one of the examples Pomoneris intermedia which occurs on Black Mountain and so we collect pictures of the plants uh, pictures of the leaves, pictures of the fruit, the seeds, so that anyone can identify them. Um, I'd just like to talk about another thing that's sprucing my own uh, interest in alpine plants. Uh, I've been working with colleagues on uh, wildflower walks in the Parish region across the Oscar Natural Park. and. Uh, what we're focusing on is really the, what one sees on an actual walk rather than a, a book that does give species by uh, their name and classification. So we take a walk and people wander along it and we show them the plants that uh, occur along this length of walk. And for example, this an enemy buttercup, Anoculus anemones, which is a, a threatened species. And, uh, it's recovering well now since cattle grazing was removed. But I'm also interested in the pollinators up there. So we've, we've been recording the pollinators on these, um, uh, in this case, um, on Craspedias. Um, there's a, a wide range of pollinators up there that are of considerable interest in relation to the effects of climate change on the alpine flora 